time since we spoke the first time and well I'm, I'm very excited a little bit nervous but I know this is going to be a great chat <laughs> oh gosh there's nothing to be nervous about yeah. <laughs> by the time we're I know I know best friends, <laughs> I promise <laughs> All right, Irma, so why don't we start by you telling us how do you feel about competing at Miss Universe? Is of this course, a dream come true of course, or what? It's a dream come true because this was my second time trying to represent Mexico in Miss Universe. The first time was in 2016 and I was first runner-up. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember or if you know Crystal Silva. Um, she went to Miss Universe yeah, and, well, course. I was first runner-up. And seven years after that, I decided to compete again um, because this is my dream. And I, I knew that I was capable of representing Mexico and to, to send my message, to take my message, message with me and to, to, to send it to, to people who is uh, following me in this dream and this whole process. And, and of course, being in Miss Universe in that huge platform, make me feel very proud, uh, make me feel very satisfied because um, it is a huge step for me and, and represent Mexico that is a very, a very beautiful country with a lot of traditions, with a lot of culture and well, screaming Mexico in that night, it's going to be amazing. Oh my gosh, I love Mexico so, so much. In fact, a big part of my wow. new book that I'm writing oh. takes place in Mexico. How, how many times have you been here? <laughs> I've been to Mexico, okay. I believe, twice. I've been to the um, Cancun side, the Mayan Riviera. Okay, well, you, to you, you should go to Sonora, that we have a beautiful beach that is... Beach that is um, San Carlos, Sonora, and it is beautiful. You're going to eat very good uh, food, and you're going to to watch a beautiful sunset. And you should come. You should come. <laughs> in the where, north what of part Mexico. of Mexico is that in? Actually, I'm from Sonora. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that where you're from? Okay. Okay. Do they have any temples over there? Because I'm really interested to go see some either as I know Aztec temples are around Mexico City, but the Mayan Mayan temples they're more around like yeah. the Palenque no, area, it's like right? <laughs> I, I've done my <laughs> Sonora, we don't have uh, those kind of things, but we have like uh, magical towns, and and you should go um, to to know about those kind of places that are real magical and uh, well we have different places where you can enjoy uh, beautiful um, weather and um, it's sometimes really hot <laughs> but if you are if you are um, trying to get a, a beautiful time you should go to San Carlos or Puerto Peñasco that is a different beach and um, well it's it's something beautiful and we have um, different different like tribes like Los Jackies and Seris and those kind of traditions and it is beautiful to, to learn about their history and to know how they live and how do, do they um, do their things to, to live and, and I don't know, to know their different yeah. traditions, it, it is beautiful. It's so yeah. interesting. I would love to you visit should. that <laughs> part of Mexico and see where you're from. It's so cool. So now that you say you, you competed in 2016, now it's almost, what, eight years later, what has changed? What do you think changed from the first time you competed and you were first runner-up to now being Miss Universe Mexico, to getting that crown, the national title? Um, well, what do you a think lot of changed? things have changed in, in this whole time. Um, I'm from Sonora, and after that national competition, I came to Mexico City to work in, as a TV host. And of course that changed my mind and the way that I was thinking and the way that I was, I was, I was mm, living my life. And I don't know, like being independent, um, having different dreams and being my, by myself in Mexico City. And also um, I've been traveling a lot in this whole seven years. And I, I think that it's, it's um, like a important part of, of the person that I am right now. 
learn uh, about different um, cultures, about different countries, and and I don't know, like the the, the fact that I, I've been I've been in different places, um, it is amazing, and of course I've been working on myself, um, trying to understand me, uh, trying to to know which is it's my purpose in this life and and also to live my life because um it, in 2016 i was 19 and cristal silva was 24 and the experience um i don't know the power of your voice the power of your action it's different uh from a girl that was 19 years old to a girl who um was uh, 24 and I know that that crown and that yeah. year was to Cristal Silva <laughs> and and I know that um, everything happened with for a reason and I believe in God and I, I know that this is my time and and I don't know I feel I feel prepared I feel it, it feels right uh, right and real and I think it, it's a beautiful experience that's it. That really is how we can always look at our life, that whatever comes in, in terms of circumstances, people, you know, things that happen, it, we need to always believe that it's for our yeah. highest good and for the greater good of all. Um, and really just surrender to the fact that you are in the right place at the right time. And what's exactly what's meant to be yeah. is <laughs> yeah and of course of course the the years that you've had getting to know yourself traveling discovering the world discovering about yourself as well that all adds up to become a the next yeah, best totally. who you can be <laughs> and now you're ready you're ready yeah and this the is whole process. amazing yeah. so if you had yeah if you had one wish, you had, let's say, a magic wish, and it had to do with Miss okay. Universe, and you couldn't wish to win the crown, <laughs> what would you wish for um, in Miss Universe to happen? About Miss Universe? Uh, maybe... Like, what would you okay, happen in this um, contest? Maybe... <laughs> um, I will wish that people really understand how beauty pageants are, and that... Well, I know that a lot of people know or or follow the, the follow the, these contests because they they believe in Miss Universe, but a lot of people think that it, it is an easy thing to do and that we should be perfect and that we should look perfect every single uh, moment in our competition. But actually, being in these kind of platforms like Miss Universe, it's to raise our voices. It's, it's to inspire people, to motivate people to follow the, their dreams and to try to uh, inspire people to change or to create awareness about the situations that we're living. And uh, being in Miss Universe, it's more than showing your your passarella or, or your beautiful body or your beautiful skin, your beautiful face. Um, it's about being real. And I think people should should know and should be um, in the same way as we are. Mm. And for yourself personally, what would you wish for? Like one great <laughs> outcome besides winning. Uh, <laughs> what would well, you want to have? The second place. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, maybe <laughs> to, to really enjoy this That's experience good. and to try to be myself, trying to show who really I am. And because it, it happens in 2016 that I was trying to be the perfect girl, be the perfect Miss, so people can see in me a, a, a Miss Mexico or a, a, the next Miss Universe. And I think the, the most important thing that we can do when, when we are um, trying to reach our dreams, it's to be ourselves and to don't lose that focus and to enjoy every step that, that I'm going to make and to, to learn about every, every experience that I'm going to have there. That's right. That is probably <laughs> the best thing that you could wish for, right? <laughs> what, what more could we possibly wish for? Just have that amazing time, meet as many people 
as we can make the best connections yeah, and make incredible <laughs> memories because at the end of the day that's all to create left a with. real friendship memory. between um between all the contests so we can have we we, we yeah. can um yes. have you know, a friend for all over the world that it is amazing <laughs> Exactly. That is the best gift ever. No, no, no. Do you know who I your roommate know. is? I think they're going to assign our our roommate when when we yeah. were there. Is there any country in particular you're looking forward to meeting um, the most? Eddie yeah, I feel excited about knowing Philippines. That Celeste seems to be a pretty nice girl. And I already met um, like six of them that are Honduras, um, Chile, Colombia, uh, Peru, and Guatemala. And we, we went to um, an event in Miami and it was amazing to, to meet them because, um, I don't know, like sharing yeah. this dream and, and knowing that, that now we have the confidence to to talk to each other when we arrive to the um, competition is going to be different. I mean, we, we don't need to start from zero. That's right. That's right. Yes, I remember one of my, some of my best memories were from yeah. building those bonds with my roommates and the other girls that we had a really close <laughs> group together with the Russian speaking ladies. And it was just so beautiful. And I still yeah. am in touch with at least four mm -hmm. or five of the, of the... And back then we didn't even have social media. We didn't have all yeah. of the easy way to stay in touch, but we still did. Imagine yeah, now, okay. you're gonna really have <laughs> yeah. friends from in Be, Being part. in Miss Universe is really <laughs> magical. And um, it's, it's all about um, to, to learn and to, I don't know, to create this kind of, of friendships so you can you can keep um i don't know learning about them or i don't know to to have friends who live the same experience as you yes that's right it's so important now of course this is all so so exciting and I'm sure you're just over the moon and can't wait. Is your family no. coming to New Orleans? Well, no, my family is um, oh, no? not going to, to be there because they don't have visa. And, but my boyfriend and my mother-in-law are going to be there. And also uh, some friends that are very important to me because they, they um, were with me when I was um, competed, competing in 2016 and so they've been with me in this whole time and, and well they are very important to me and a lot of friends are going to be there and I know a lot of Mexicans are going to to be um, screaming Mexico with me. <laughs> I know of course Mexican fans are some of the most excited yeah. and loyal <laughs> fans that we know and I'm sure we're going to see yes. that Mexican flag yes. fly really high. <laughs> you see, already yeah. we have so many comments with the Mexican <laughs> flag and a lot of purple hearts. Is there yeah. some significance yes. behind um, the purple hearts? It is hearts? something special to me because um, I lost a brother two years ago. He, he had an accident, a motorcycle accident. Oh, and, yeah. well, yeah, thank you so much. I'm so and her, his color, his favorite color, um, were purple, um, so I'm, I'm making this. I'm making this color with me um, because he's he's with me in every step that I that I make. Yeah. So it is something special. And in Mexico, we have a tradition that every queen should um, like a color. So the the fans change their profile photo to to this color. And so this this is like the way they, oh, they support fun. us. Oh, what a beautiful tribute to your brother. That's really yes. Of course, he's, and he's with you, right? Thank he's going to be with you every step of the way. <laughs> his energy and his heart. Thank you so much. It's lovely. Okay. So, you know, now that we're speaking about energy and all of this <laughs> <laughs> metaphysical stuff, um, what 
do you think are some of these energetical tips or techniques that you do on a daily basis that help you prepare <laughs> in a spiritual way? Because, you know, it's important to prepare in a physical way, in a mental way, and, of course, the energetic, spiritual way. Is there something <laughs> special that um, you do? Well, I'm trying to visualize myself in, in this whole experience. And the fact that, I, that this is my last chance to represent Mexico, I, want, I wanted to do it great, and I want to enjoy it. And I don't, I don't want to feel, um, I don't know, like disturbed with, with the comments or, or with the things that can happen and I don't know I just trying to visualizing myself there and and I don't know to enjoy every or, or to enjoy this whole experience and um, I've been working with um, with my like a life coach about these kind of things and to know that um, like to say some mantras like I'm worth it. I'm capable. Mm -hmm. um, I deserve this. And every every night, I when I go to bed, I try to to be grateful for the day that I just had and for the opportunity of being of being yeah living this this kind of things that it is my dream and being able to enjoy it. It is amazing. That's right. These are such important things to do on a daily basis i like how you say you do some kind of mantras yes. because words yes, yeah. are very powerful not, uh -huh. right whatever we say yeah. becomes the reality whatever we believe and say and think and words in fact they can yeah. be almost like a magic square but, but it, it is important to like say magic. those words but also believe those words words i mean if you if you say that you're capable of, you need to know and, and you need to feel that you are capable of do uh, anything you want or that you deserve to be here and to really know that you're saying these words because you believe on those words or you believe in yourself and you believe that these things that are happening to you are um, meant to be and, and I think it is important to, to be connected with those words. Mm. Because essentially, your reality yeah. becomes exactly. what you believe. It's a reflection of what you already believe about yourself, and that's exactly yes. what you get <laughs> in reality. That's incredible. And when it comes to visualization, I just want to ask, because I know everyone has different techniques and different beliefs about it. Do you think that it's important to visualize yourself winning? Did you visualize yourself winning the crown for Miss Universe Mexico? And do you think that yes. everyone should be doing it? Because at the end of the day, everyone is going to be doing it, but only one person gets it. So who is that yeah, one person I who's going to get it? It will be me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think it is yeah. important to, to see yourself with that crown. And I did it with my national competition um, because it is a way to believe the things that you're living and it has to be just for for good i mean for like a motivation not to to pressure yourself to do that i mean it, it is important to know that right. yes you can you can get that crown but maybe maybe someone else is going to to win that crown but what what are the things that you are going to do with your experience or with your second place or with your top five or whatever uh, place you, you get in that competition? But I think it is important to, to, to see yourself or to try to, to see yourself with that crown because it is something, uh, for the, for, it is something um, that you are uh, working for. And it is important to believe that you can actually win that crown. And of course, every, every um, sister that is going to be in this universe should um, visualize herself with that crown. Um, it, is our, right. it is the same dream that, that we have. And I don't know, it, it is important. And it's not for a crown, not just for a crown, mm -hmm. uh, for whatever you, you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you about the fact that what you say, 
when you visualize yourself, you are not attaching yourself to that out to the particular outcome. You can visualize and believe that it is possible because anything is possible. If you can visualize it, that means it already exists in some <laughs> yeah. version of the multiverse. Right? Definitely. <laughs> but it's only when you start attaching your happiness and you place so much expectation on the fact that, yes, this is what's going to happen. Because exactly. at the end of the day, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's largely outside of your control, right? It's outside of your control who the judges are, what the judges are going to be thinking, you know, the political climate at the time, you know, that also has some influence, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit of luck. And of course, the other contestants who also have their own mindsets and their own visualization. So if you can visualize and say, yeah, this is a possibility, but I'm not placing my expectation and I'm not placing my happiness on this particular outcome. And I'm just going to take any outcome that comes my way with gratitude and appreciation and simply just yeah, um, exactly. you know, accept, right? And I think in that way, that is an effective way to visualize, but not in a way like this yeah, is the only exactly outcome that like I, I should accept. win that crown. Yeah, that's yes. Everything yeah. can happen. That, that's, and I think that's the main key difference in people who use visualization successfully Don't. and those who <laughs> yes. kind of shoot themselves in the foot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think wanting something so much and saying that this must happen this way, you're actually pushing it away. You're resisting because exactly. you're not floating with non-resistance and with... Um, and I'm going downstream with the with the flow of life. You're pushing against it and saying like, I need to go this way. And you start pedaling and paddling and saying that, ah, oh, things should conform to me, not yes. I should and, accept. And you stop um, enjoying and you stop uh, living your dreams or living that moment that it, I think it's more important to enjoy the process and see what is going to happen at the end that um, thinking all the time that that it's the only way that you're going to be happy or the only way that you're going to be successful. Right. right. <laughs> so, so true. I'm glad we're having this conversation because it's a good reminder for all of us, even for myself. I'm no longer competing, but I have things in my life that I want to achieve. I have goals. And if I really stick too much with what the only outcome that is going to be acceptable to me, I'm not going to enjoy yeah. the process and I'm probably going yes. to be disappointed in the end. Right? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So now let's talk about your platform and the message that you're going to take to the universe, this wonderful cause that is near and dear to your heart that is going to bring yes. a lot of value. Um, what since is that 2000, cause? well, the beginnings of 2021, I started working with a non-profit organization that it's about helping uh, people who is um, um, uh, to help in migration. And because, well, we, we've been seeing a lot of um, problems with this, with this situation. And as Mexicans, we are people who, who leave Mexico to, to go to the U.S to get a better life, uh, better work, to send money to their families. And now uh, people from Venezuela, from uh, Guatemala, uh, IT are doing the same thing. And I think that, uh, well, we, we are trying to, to create awareness about this situation, about um, human rights, and that they aren't leaving their homes just because they want to. They, they are doing that because they need it and they need to, to find um, a better job and I think that as human beings, uh, as human beings we deserve to live with dignity and I think we need to be more respectful, we need to be more empathetic, we need to be, um, well, to help each other to, to overcome this situation and that, that is um, my social project and one of the messages that I'm sending or that I'm taking to Miss Universe um, because I think we need to know that um, no matter where we are, um, no matter 
our um, religion, our nationality, we are values, ba valuable just for the fact that we are human beings and that we deserve to live with dignity. Is there anything that people can do to support yes, the of course. Um, uh, besides uh, making awareness about this, um, we're trying to help them by giving them food, giving them shoes that they ask for shoes because they walk long distance and um, I don't know, to support them with this kind of things, with clothes, with um, medicine, with, with things that they can take to this whole um way to to the US right wow yes that's really incredible it is amazing you're doing and that kind of work. now um, I'm helping a different organization that helps uh, women and, and kids that, that are in the same situation um, that are immigrants and we've been seeing this whole problematic and it is very sad to see um, what they are living. I mean, um, women are raped, are, are um, violated, are, um, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't know how to say it in, in English, but like, um, um, I don't know how to say it, like, um, <laughs> yeah, if, and if maybe somebody can help me. translate for us. If you say it in Spanish, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Like, um, uh, Trata de Blancas, for example, yeah. that I don't know how to say it, like, they take women just to, to transportation of drugs and those kind of things. Or, or they sell right. them. And, right. I don't know, it is, it is very hard. Yeah, yeah. Like people traffic. Human yeah. traffic. Exactly. Human, human and, traffic. um, yeah, it is horrible. And, to see those kids suffering for these situations when they should be at school, they should be enjoying their their childhood. Um, I don't know, it, it is something um, hard and um, I think we need to be more empathetic with, with, with them. Absolutely. There's just so much in the world that can be done and just simply bringing awareness to these issues is already doing a lot of help. So thank you so much for thank all this, this work that you're doing. And you know, I'm, I'm sure that it's for the best. And yeah, it's going to improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is all about work. helping yeah. people and, and raising my voice, uh, using this platform to, to give them the, I don't know, the, the projection that they need to to we need to we need to speak about these these situations. Um, we need to we can be afraid of talking about migration because it's something that it's going to keep happening, and we need to know how to handle it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, thank <laughs> yes. you, all guys, who thank have you. been helping us translate. <laughs> Human trafficking, it was here. a very, very easy yes. uh, phrase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, so before we start to kind of wrap things up, was there any questions that you have to ask me about competition, about preparing, about anything to do with Miss Universe? As you know, I've been uh, in this industry for quite some time, so I would love to be helpful to you. Yes, um, actually I well. have different questions, but I'm going to ask you this one. Um, what do you think it's the most important thing that a, that a Miss Universe should have? Or what makes you a Miss Universe? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Only one? <laughs> one, two. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is definitely a tough one because it's hard to just pinpoint one thing and say that, oh, this is it. If you have it, you got it. And if okay. you don't have it, you're not going to get it. <laughs> but I would have to say that a personal brand is super important. And when I say personal brand, of course, I'm talking about online presence. Because right now, 
we live in a world that you are a public figure and you're if you don't have that online presence you're not a public figure so having some kind of personal brand that's identifiable and that is really connecting the dots for people so that when they see you like for instance you have the purple hearts okay. which is great that is part of your personal brand and i love that and the fact that you have that symbol or you have that word or you have a line that you always stick to and it kind of becomes associated in people's minds Irma right she is a voice for human trafficking right she's a voice for uh, helping those victims of human trafficking so uh kind of having that little package that you can put together that is visually appealing and also visually recognizable as well as you know there's words and there's symbols and there's colors that you can already bring to the Miss Universe organizations and then they can say great she's done the work all we have to do is put that sash and that crown on her and she's ready to go so to me that kind of feels like that's what the Miss Universe organization is looking for they're looking for a brand and you know we we heard already the new owner of Miss Universe saying that we're looking for a transformational leader mm -hmm. but yeah. what is that exactly that is someone who can be able to speak with their with their brand and with the message that they're saying that they're transforming the lives of other people that they can somehow transform the world for the better right so if you can put that brand together and convince the judges convince the fans and the Miss Universe organization that you're ready to go you have that package ready to go then it's just a, it just makes it so easy right it's a seamless transition from yeah, national definitely. queen to international queen yes of course you totally agree it, it's beautiful the things that you you say <laughs> saying that um well it's yeah. important to to have that balance between the things that you're saying and the things that or, or your actions and um yeah it's going to be easier to to choose one leader because um she already um is convinced about um, her personal brand or the message that that she's going to send or that I am going to send. Yeah. Like she's done the work, right? She she's already done the work and now it's just easy to say, okay, <laughs> there you go. You've okay, done the work, perfect. here's your reward. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, other than that, because you know, we all, all of you girls who I speak to on these live sessions, you obviously have the compassion and the dedication and the resilience, right? And all of those things that a beauty queen should have, you all have it. But what's going to set the person apart is somebody who's been a little bit of a visionary, right? They, they thought about how can I take my unique personality and my strength and experiences and skills and put it together so that it becomes valuable not only just mm -hmm. for the organization but for the world in general and so now, now we have the force for good crown yes. the new Miss Universe crown so it kind of really showcases to us and, and speaks to us that they're looking for someone who is going to be that force for good and in which way, right? I always say bring value. It's not about being an inspiration because yeah, everyone is an inspiration somehow, but it's the value that you're going to bring to the world that's really important. And that is in fact inspirational. Is I just I find it a lot of the times when I get I ask my students or I ask somebody, you know, why do you want to be in this universe? And if they say I want to be an inspiration, you know, that kind of sounds like yeah, it, it, it kind of sounds like they want the ego to be validated to be an inspiration to other people but what about what are you going to do what are you going to bring to the world and instead of saying i want to be an inspiration which is actually saying that i want to be loved i want to be looked up to switch it around and say how can i be of service and what can i give right because with your hard work and the value that you bring 
you're automatically going to be an inspiration. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to want to be an inspiration. You will be. Oh, right? Yeah, you are is, already. This is too powerful, Natalie. <laughs> it is. And it is true. Um, yeah. What, what are you going to do with your title? I mean, as you said, being an inspiration, yeah. it can be easy because um, someone can feel um, are not related to your stories and um, but what else are you going to do? How you're going to use your title? How you're yeah. going to use this huge platform that that we already uh, always say that that um, this universe it's a huge platform to raise our voices, but for what you're going to raise your voice? It's not only to to say like um or no follow your dreams, that it is important, and it is important to say it because sometimes we need a reminder about it. But what else you're going to do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you got it. And at the end of the day, it's all about energy exchange. Mm -hmm. It's the law of energy exchange. What you give, the more you give, the more you receive, right? And I always feel that whoever ends up winning the title they have brought something so valuable and so important from them to the world that they got equally rewarded with the, with the title. So, yeah, I think it's just about um, determining yeah. how you want to be of service. And you can even visualize that, right? I always say that when, when I do my visualization sessions with my clients, I kind of have them visualize giving out some form of um, energy, like in the form of a light or vapor or water, anything that you can visualize how your energy has a color. Maybe you can use purple, right? And visualize that purple light or purple energy streaming out of your body into mm -hmm. every person that you are able yes. to touch with it whether it's the fans who are watching you on their TV screen or on their phone screen, the judges, the Miss Universe organization, you know, the people that you're helping with your nonprofit organization, right? Sending out that light and visualizing that purple healing light, touching as many lives as possible. And at the end of the day, whatever you get back in return, is just yeah, a bonus, totally. right? <laughs> yes, you need, you need to learn about <laughs> everything you're living. Yeah. All right. So, do you have any other questions, or should we wrap it up by, for now? I don't know. Maybe some more personal. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, um, well, you already yeah. said that um, you keep you still keep in touch with with some of your um, friends from Miss Universe. Uh, but what or which experience? were the um, most important experience in your life during Miss Universe? I mean, something that um, makes you think different or feel different. <laughs> you know, funny that you ask that because I was just thinking about it earlier, how when I was competing in Miss Universe, a lot of things went <laughs> like, like, wrong. What? You know, because you think you <laughs> want everything to go perfectly, right? You want everything to go smoothly. And hopefully it will. And I wish for you <laughs> from the universe that everything does go perfectly for you. But it doesn't always happen like that, right? Life happens and circumstances can be favorable or unfavorable sometimes. A lot of things have gone wrong in my competition. And from, from my dress being, you know, not fitting me properly and not kind of like it was too tight around the waist so it was just like <laughs> okay. puffing up on the back um, my shoes only arrived a day before the preliminaries and I didn't have a chance to practice in them and they were two sizes and too big for me what did you do <laughs> yeah yes. I had to work with it I had to put them on and do it because I had no other no other shoes for my dress uh, on top of everything, one of my, um, I had gotten veneers put on my teeth before I went and 
a little piece of it chipped off when I was eating an apple and I had like a little crack and I knew that, you know, if I, you know, have to compete like this, I have to just make the best out of it because there's no way I could have gone to the dentist. There's nothing that I could change. So I knew that I needed to change something inside of me. And when I said to myself, well, this is it. This is how it's going to be. So I'm going to have to change my attitude and change my mindset and make the best out of it. And it really is all about the mind. Of course, don't get me wrong. I had a panic attack. I had a moment of pure breakdown where I called my parents and I cried and I said, my goodness, you know, like I prepared so much and this is what's happening. But once that emotion was out, once I was able to speak through it and get it, get get it released, that's when I kicked up my, turned up my winning mindset and I said, I'm going to have to do the best that I can here with whatever oh, I have. About and <laughs> despite all of that, yeah, despite all of that, I maintained that gratitude, that incredible lightness where I felt like, wow, this every day here is a gift. Every day I'm waking up and just thinking, pinch me, is this real? I'm experiencing my dream, I'm, I'm living that dream. And so all of that that happened, I consider it to be a blessing because it helped me to reframe my mindset and learn how to deal with, with setbacks mm -hmm. and with crises and with things that you don't like, but yes. you know, life is going to yeah, test you. And it's not <laughs> the end ready. if something like that happened. So, I mean, it's just the way that you see those kind of situations. What are you going to do with that? I mean, because you, you couldn't stay just yeah. crying. Mm -hmm. Precisely. So, 